Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. This is going to be a dash removal video for an IS-300. This is 2004. If you don't have 2004, it might be a little bit different. So I am not going to remove the seats. It was suggested to remove the seats, uh, but I'm just putting them all the way back. And uh, I am now going to kill the battery just because uh, it'll be a long job. I don't want it to die from lights being on. and Also, I don't want to short out anything under the dash. There's two pins that hold the bottom uh, rotating part of the glove box and then just pull the latch and that will come right off. It never ever fails that when I'm trying to do a video somebody's going to run some leaf blower or some kind of loud motor outside so sorry about that. Remove this 10 millimeter screw and a Phillips screw. The 10 millimeter, oh thank you. 10 millimeter goes there. The Phillips is up on top where that little hook underneath where this little hook thing is and uh, just remove those two and I'm going to bag everything and mark it so I know where it got what it goes to when it goes back you might have your own method of organizing the nuts and bolts and screws. Uh, this is the airbag wire retaining clip you just squeeze those two little wings together and pull that out of up here in the hole up here where it was stuck and then you're going to unplug the airbag wire this is why you disconnected the battery this little white tab it's like spring loaded or somehow anyway that's what you pull back on and then you release the wire there's a zip tie here that holds the two wire looms I just cut the zip tie be careful you don't cut the wires and then I push this glove box light switch through and now I'll be able to get at it and easily disconnect it whoops I wasn't recording there now you just push this little tab in it slides out of the light switch now we've got both wire looms free move these two 12 millimeter brassy colored bolts that uh, I believe they attach the airbag um, you can't miss them. They're they're up there, and they're the only two brassy looking ones now way up there Higher up than the 12 millimeter. There are two 10 millimeter nuts I'm only going to show you one side It's really hard to get this picture and also the picture might look weird when I put it up on the internet It might be upside down or something because I'm I'm literally upside down on my back pointing up So I don't know how that's going to come out. But anyway, you should be able to find it. Two 10 millimeter, and they uh, are up higher. Okay, it's one on the other side. I can't show you the picture. Yeah, it's what they look like when you get them out. Be very careful. Don't drop them down into some other area of the dash wheel. You'll have to spend an hour getting them out. I just balanced them on the end of my socket, and maybe I got lucky. Remove the passenger side door sill panel. It's got a little clip way up the front, a bigger one, a bigger one, a bigger one, and a little clip in the back. I like a tool like that to get it out so you don't scratch things up. Remove the kick panel push nut. Despite, I used regular pliers and pulled it towards me. It comes from right there and then pull this panel off just by pulling it towards you. There are two clips that uh, you need to release. Again, I like to use that little blue tool. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt that is revealed after you get this kick panel off. Well, now we're going to depart a little bit from the thread that I've been following because, uh, surprise, I've got a nav system in this car. Uh, there's usually a cloth tray here if you don't have the nav system, and it's pretty easy to get the cloth tray out. Uh, you can go back to that thread on my IS if you need, if you, that's your kind of car. But now I'm going to have to kind of make it up as I go here. I think I'm going to start down here with the shifter 
console area and work my way up. So I'll be back when I figure it out. Well, okay, after a couple of days, we're back on the Lexus dash removal. So now we're going to pry here and I'm going to use a cloth to protect this and I'm going to use one of my pry tools. I've got a bag of pry tools uh, so I'm going to need two hands. I'll be back. So there's three clips there. Come on, focus. There in the middle and over here. You get those three loose. I use a pry tool on each end. Now there's something else up the side I'm going to have to find. I took out one of the vents. They just it's just two pins that go in those holes so you gently pry them out. I thought it might help me but I don't really see anything that is going to allow me to re release this this trim piece. Well I'm going to go online and try and find something else about where it releases. I found the three places here. It seems like there's a clip there, but I pried on it and it didn't come out and I just don't want to force it. I'm strong enough to break it and I don't want to break it, so I'm going to go look some more. Okay, guys and gals, I'm back. I went to the internet and I googled it and here it is. I apologize to you guys and gals that are saying, duh, you didn't know about that, but this is the first time I've taken this apart, so no, I didn't know about that. There's this little tiny panel that sits right in front of the nav screen, and you have to reach in this little tiny space here to get it started, and then you pop it off, and it's got three clips, and it comes off very easy, and then it reveals the two screws that I've been that I fought for about an hour trying to pull the thing out because I didn't have those screws off. So let's get those screws off. It's hard to get them out once you unscrew them so I just went and magnetized this screwdriver. If I think of it later on I'll show you how easy it is to magnetize a screwdriver so that you can you know get these loose little bits and pieces out. So just gently pull on this whole thing. I just can't believe how I fought this thing yesterday. Ay, yeah, yeah. Anyway, just pull it forward, and now there's three electrical plugs to disconnect. And looks like there should be plenty of room for me to get at them and disconnect them. If any of them are tricky, I'll show you. And they're all just tabs, so I just used a little screwdriver. Press this tab down and pull it out. Press that tab down and pull it out. This one, I had to press that right there and push it, and they'll all come out pretty easy. That one's just a ground. All right, we're getting somewhere. Wow. And I guess I didn't break anything from the looks of it. Remove the two 10 millimeter bolts there and there and they are focus okay those hold this the HVAC and the stereo and my directions that I'm following said to remove this track panel just by pulling it out but I'm not sure that's gonna work let me get into it well it is true I just reached down on the left driver side of this panel and pulled straight towards towards the shift knob and uh, that's coming out so I've got some things to unplug there if there's anything tricky I'll show you no, those three are just the obvious, so unplug them and put the uh, track panel aside. Okay, that will reveal two more 10 millimeter bolts. Take them out. That will allow you to just gently lift the head unit out, and uh, you'll have some unplugging to do. I want to just give you a side note here. Um, some people have recommended removing the seats to facilitate 
removing the dash. I kind of like the seats in because it gets me, it gives me somewhere to sit in a reasonably comfortable position and I can actually, I can run the seat up and back and run the seat up so I can look behind there without having to strain my back too much. You young guys and gals probably don't have to worry about that, but for me I like the seats in so far. For the three black wires on the left, let me get a good focus here. One of them is just clipped on up here. It's the one that connects to that. So just unclip it. The other two, the one with the black cover on it goes to the top. The one without the black cover, it's just a silver thing, goes on the bottom, holes in your head unit, and uh, they just pull straight out. There's no locking tab or anything. On the radio head unit, it looks like this one was not used. I got a little bit confused here. I marked this one A and this one A, but by the time I got the last thing unplugged, there's like a female outlet here, but I'm not seeing anything that goes to it. <laughs> Um, so, those two up at the top, that's like your HVAC, the three at the bottom, that's your track panel, and then for the radio, it's just the, the three black wires, this, and I've only got one connector here, so if I find out differently, I'll let you know, otherwise there's one unused female connection there. This panel underneath the uh, steering column has three screws. One, two, mm, three up there. Uh, you have to remove those. And I'm having a lot of fun with my magnetized screwdriver. On my car, there's a plug right here that goes to nothing. I thought that was kind of funny. Must be for something that uses this little panel next to the um, memory buttons. Hood release, that's kind of obvious how that comes apart. I think this is the OBD2 sensor. Yeah, OBD2, and it has two little clips there, uh, both sides, and then just turn this sideways and let it go through the hole. Over here on the right of the steering column, there's a blue plug and looks like an air hose, something to do with the um, HVAC air flow or air temperature I guess something like that any of these things that I'm not sure of please put something down in the comments and uh, help everybody who's looking at the thread uh, I mean at the video okay Froggy's back on this job doesn't seem to ever end let's drop the steering column there's one two if you can see it there and three and one on the other side so there's four 14 millimeter loosen them up and then let it drop down and rest on here you'll need a deep socket for the two that are close to the firewall gauge cluster screws two Phillips heads there and there and this steering column doesn't really actually drop down that easily because there are things attached to it. This ignition is attached, I'm pointing, ignition is attached to the steering column and uh, maybe something on the other side, uh, but it, it does get loose. All right, so I'm just going to see if I can get the dash out with it loose like that. At this point, the way I'm doing it is I remove the top half of the top half bottom half covers that cover the steering column just so I had some room to see what's going on makes it much easier to take this 
surround of the gauges and rotate it towards the left and then you can get at that plug for the dimmer. I pulled the little dimmer um, knob off but it looks like I didn't have to pull the dimmer knob off so just unplug in the back. Okay, I'm going to apologize in advance. My yard guys are here, so you might hear the blower and the mower. Back in the car, remove this gauge cluster. One, two, three screws. Okay, two harnesses on the back of the gauge cluster. Pretty easy to, to get at. Just depress the little tab pull them out nice and easy remove that 10 millimeter screw it's right to the left of your screen uh, the written directions i'm following say to unplug the light sensor housing but that is an impossibility right now so i'm going to skip that until i've got the dash loose and we're going to move on to uh, the door sill and that kick panel. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the jets and helicopters that fly overhead every so often. It's not like I'm in the flight path of an airport or anything, but it just always seems to happen when I'm trying to do a video. Anyway, use your blue tool, your uh, little plastic pry thing, very, very useful. Get a bunch of those. Start from the back and pull that up. Just keep pulling up wiggle and be gentle so you don't break the tabs. There's a push pin fastener for this kick panel right up there. So pull that out and remove the kick panel. Actually that was for a fuse panel. It, that one right there on the firewall is the one I want you to pull out. You just pull on that with a pair of pliers. It's a, a little hard but you have to pull hard and it just comes right off. There you go. Remove this 10 millimeter. Sorry for the noise. Pull this trim panel. You don't have to take it all the way out, but pull it away because it overlaps with the dash. So just pull it up. About, about like that, I guess. You have airbags. Pop these two little covers. 10 millimeter. Undo tricky you see this part right here for the side airbag trim area that goes into a slot right there slotted so once you get the top of this trim piece loose you got to move this kind of down shove it down so it gets to the big hole part and then pull it out and I just discovered that so there's your this really the tip of the day for this uh, from Froggy. Here's a better picture of it there and gee whiz come on oh there it is there that's where it goes so just look at it it's got to come down a little and out when it's attached it's probably like right about there so just shove down a little and out Woo! wondered what a uh, side curtain airbag looks like unexploded there it is and be careful I would recommend you have the battery disconnected and wait five or so minutes uh, I'm doing this without the battery disconnected but that's my chance that I'm taking Somewhere in all this, there's a sensor and there's electrical connections, obviously. And this is like a small bomb when it goes off. Before you start pulling like a madman, check for any fasteners that you might have missed. There's one right there that I just found. It's ground. Little carpet clips here on both sides. Here's one I just found right here. The head of it is probably a 10 minute millimeter the head of it is facing towards the engine and uh, it goes from a bracket right there to a brace 
I don't know if it needs to come out or not, but I'm going to take it out because it looks like it's hanging me up. It looks like it might come apart right there also, but I don't know. One or the other has got to go. If, if I pull too hard, I might break those plastic pieces off, so I think I'll take that out. Found another one here. This is uh, driver's side left of the steering wheel, and it goes up. I don't know, maybe this is a sensor for HVAC, but it needs to be unplugged. Remember, when a guy shows you how to do this, it's on his particular car. Your car might have different options or more or less options, so take this as a general guideline. Remember, I still got to un undo those uh, light sensors. Pulled and got a big pop there. That means one of the, the clips that run along the bottom of the windshield let go. So that's that's a good one. That's a good sound. It doesn't mean it broke. It just means it, it let go. They let go with a pop. Well, I didn't know until it just popped up that this cover in the passenger side airbag comes loose. So, <laughs> well, there you go. Um, maybe I missed a step. But anyway, uh, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to take that out. I might disconnect the battery to do it work on that. Actually, I already disconnected the electrical to the airbag, so it should be okay. Okay, airbag out. I had to d d disconnect this right here. That, at, at the very least, it makes the dash a lot lighter, because the thing weighs a ton. Um, now let's see where you can go from here. It looks to me like this bracket has to come out. It goes towards the passenger side but it kind of wraps around a vent and I think that's hanging up the removal. And you see that right there? I gotta get that out. That That's holding this part of the duct work. Hold on. Sorry. This part of the duct work I think stays attached to the car when this comes off. I'm not sure, but I'm going to take that Phillips screw out there anyway. I want to take a picture of this just as I'm sitting in the passenger seat and how I twisted it to get it out. So this vent tube here, I left it attached and I, I put a piece of tape on there to hold it up so out of the way because it was just dangling loose on that end. I've got this whole dash rotated about 90 degrees or so. I got it over the shift knob and I got it past the parking brake lever. I guess I could have put that down but I'm on a slope so I had it pulled all the way up. And uh, just kind of twisting it and maneuvering it. Uh, passenger side seat is all the way back. Wheel is tilted all the way down. And this will come out the passenger side this way. I never did find anything that connected where those sunlight sensor bulbs are to anything. So I don't know what was going on on somebody else's car, but not on my car. Here's a picture of the clips, five clips that you're going to pull. You have to kind of pull straight back, and there's no place to grab it easily, but pull straight back to undo those five clips. and. Uh, so now you can see where they are so you can kind of concentrate your grip or your pressure on on where those those things are located okay oh boy there's maybe that right there I'm zooming in it's in the middle of your screen maybe that's the plug that somebody else was saying you had to unplug but in this car it's not attached so I don't know Maybe they did something differently on an 04 than they did on some other years. And the, uh, like I said, those two little sensor circle things are not connected to anything. Actually, it looks like those sensors, which are like right there on the other side of where my hand is, this wire that I unplugged kind of late and I said it was a sensor, it was next to the vent area over up in here sorry up in this area that's for those two sensors so just a different location or different routing of the harness I guess 
So I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, credit to Silverlex04 who gave me the thread, gave everybody the thread with lots of good pictures that uh, gave me the the idea that I could uh, pull the dash out and do a video on it. So um, thanks, Silver. And uh, give me a thumbs up or a like if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want more from Froggy, mostly automotive, but I have a little bit of this and that, whatever I think might be helpful to people. Um, I'll see you later. Froggy out. Be careful doing this. Bye-bye. One more thing, in case anybody wondered, uh, I took two nuts and secured the steering column back up to the bracing inside the dash area and started the car up and um, you can drive a car without a dash and without a head unit and without a nav unit and without a whole bunch of things. I'm sure I'm getting a passenger side uh, airbag uh, missing code or something like that but I'll deal with that when I get it back together. Oh, I'm not going to put anything on this uh, video about refinishing. I've got other videos for refinishing, as do many other uh, guys and gals. So um, this is just dash removal. And to put it back in, look at the video again and do the opposite of taking it out. Okay, I'm not going to do a video of putting it back in. Bye-bye.